I'm John Gunther. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, happy to be here. Um, shoot. I just uh, grew up watching Yosemite Sam, and I thought, well, what would Yosemite Sam do? And so I just modeled my life, and I figured Yosemite Sam would probably fight. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm trying to grow a mustache, but failing miserably. Um, I started off doing like jujitsu and. Uh, just like as a kid, I would do judo. I had like this crazy uh, Vietnam vet guy that would, uh, his knees were all blown out from doing like parachute dives. So, uh, uh, cause he would jump out of planes and he couldn't walk really, but he would show me like, he would try to teach judo, but he couldn't like show throws and stuff. So he'd show a lot of groundwork. So I grew up like doing a lot of like jujitsu type stuff for judo but the problem with judo is like you got to get them down and then they give you like a short period of time to like work on the ground so uh but all we did was ground work because we couldn't work throws but it was like i did really well as a kid like because i had a different strategy it would just be like tackle the guy to the ground somehow and then like hold him down for 30 seconds and win so uh, i thought i was really good just because like I would throw everybody off because I'm doing ground stuff and they're trying to hit like giant beautiful throws. I would just go train with him off and on. Like he'd get drunk and go to prison and then, then, I, then he'd come back, I'd train a little bit. And then uh, I started doing jujitsu some with actually his coach uh, or, or one of his students, uh, John Saylor was, uh, I guess he taught uh, at the Olympic Training Center and stuff. He's real good at judo. And he also did jujitsu. So I started training with him a little bit. And then uh, I ended up, when I really got serious about it, like maybe six years ago, I was going to like a little community college and one of his students that uh, had done MMA fighting, and I ran into, they were like meeting at the gym at the college. And so then that's when I like really, I hadn't really seen mixed martial arts before then. I was like, oh, this is amazing. So I, I had to start training it. I got started late, but shoot, it's amazing. I gotta, gotta do this. Ah, uh, well, I uh, like originally I hated school. So I just like, I, I quit like in eighth grade. I was just like, I'm done, I'm working. I'm gonna go out and uh, just make money. But then, Later on, I thought, well, I should go back and learn some stuff. So, but, so I just went to this community college and uh, they kept wanting me to like go for a degree or something, but I'm like, I just want random classes. I just want to learn stuff. So I just took like some random classes, whatever interested me, I just took. And uh, so just my own curriculum. <laughs> Shoot, I, I used to, like growing up, I, I, I would like bike like 16 miles to go work at like this feedlot farm. And then uh, 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 I used to pick apples for 50 cents a, a bushel. And uh, me and my, my sister would always like try to come up with like money making schemes. Uh, we'd go trim goat hooves. Uh, we had this one, we'd trim for this one lady. She had this, this it was supposed to be a pygmy goat, which is like miniature goat, but it ended up growing. It was like this tall at the back. It was the biggest goat you've ever seen, but it couldn't walk because like it, it would walk on its knees because its hooves were like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. It was like, Aah. anyway, we'd go trim its hooves every so often, but they grew like crazy because it never walked on them. For some reason, it would just walk on its knees. And it would, like, we couldn't hold it still. There were, like, the two of us, and we were, like, little kids, and we were, like, tackling it down. But the only way they could get it to hold still was they, they would feed it, like, these Easter egg candies. And just one after another as we're trimming its toast. And it would hold still. It was ridiculous. But, yeah, I just had a boatload of different jobs. When I finally turned 17, I, uh, I got my license. I, w I worked on this Amish masonry crew. So we're, like, running around lifting, like, blocks. I was just tending, so I would just keep their uh, keep their mud boards filled with mortar and keep blocks loaded up on the scaffolding. We'd fill like wheelbarrows full of mortar and then run them down this thin little plank down into basements. It was a it was a good workout, a good way to stay in shape. Um, I just 
so I, I started training there. I would, uh, I, uh, I, 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 like, I started training. I trained a couple weeks, and I was like, I want to fight. This would be fun. Like, I, I'm kind of not getting confrontational. I've always been like, I never get in fights. Like, I'm super, like, get along with everybody. But I was like, that, what would be the hardest thing? You know, that would be a hard thing. So I was like, let's try it. So I, I thought it'd be fun to try and I, I fought and then I ended up like loving it, it was awesome. So then I just kept, I got a boatload of amateur fights and then our gym kind of fell apart. It was just a small little gym in Mansfield and uh, my teammate, it was basically just me and my teammate Cody Stevens. We would just go in there and you know, other people would show up but it, they'd show up and train when they had a fight. And so it, it was real hard. Uh, so he ended up going to uh, to Cleveland to Strong Style, and uh, I went up there and started training up there, and uh, that's when I uh, they they let me uh, I won. They said okay, I, I lost to this one guy uh, AJ Dobson as an amateur, and then I came back and I beat him, and then they let me go pro after that. So um, I just worked three months out of the year sheer alpacas and uh i can make enough money that i can live in my van and scrape by where i can just train the rest of the year but i you know it'd be nice to make enough to you know all i need is like if i could just make like twenty thousand bucks a year or something and and just fight i would be i would be so happy yeah yeah i just live in my van uh it's convenient because like i'll i'll like when my gym, on Sundays or whatever, I'll go down, to, I'll drive down to Columbus. So I can just live, I can just move my house wherever I'm training and go train different places. And uh, I don't have to shovel my driveway. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like uh, stuff, pe like responsibilities that come with owning a house. You have to pay property taxes. You have to, there, there's upkeep. You, you end up spending your whole life uh, just like, I, uh, I, there was a teammate that ended up like, uh, he was traveling for the holidays or whatever and he's like, hey, can you house sit my house? And so I'm just like, I had to feed his shrimp, I had to like feed his cats, I had to shovel his driveway. And then like I started adding up the time, I'm like driving half an hour to the gym twice a day. That's like two hours out of your day. And I'm like, shoot, it's kind of convenient, just wake up start up my van, go to the gym, boom, I'm there. Uh, so there's actually like a lot of convenience living in, in your van. Uh, there's a lot of upsides, there's some downsides, like it, especially in the winter. I was very happy to get on this show because it's warm and so like I was freezing in Cleveland. It was so cold this year. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of upsides too. It's the opportunity to fight the toughest guys in the world and uh, which is incredible and uh and then on this show like it's all the toughest guys from across the country which never been done before so it's 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 an incredible opportunity uh yeah i just i just want to just do whatever it takes to try to try to get some fights get as many fights as i can go as far as i can and uh if you see me tapping don't be fooled it's just morse code for i never surrender